Good morning, River Life Church. Um, I wish you a happy new year. And um, it's my privilege this morning to, br to be bringing you God's word. Um, we're trusting that God would speak to you, challenge you. His word would be powerful. And so let's just open in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for a new year. Thank you that we can gather around your word. We open our hearts that you would come and do surgery in our hearts right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I've entitled this morning's message, You Choose. Um, you see, decisions are very important. They have an effect. Um, it's been said that one or two good decisions set our life on a tra trajectory. In the same way, one or two bad decisions set our life in a direction. And um, as I was thinking about this, how important decisions are, um, and with the year 2020 behind us, as we launch in, we are going to be making decisions all the time. And I was thinking about the ramifications of the decisions that we make. And uh, these two ideas, I began to think about the idea of our free will. Um, in other words, we're free to choose to do whatever we, we want to do. And on the other side, the principle of sowing and reaping. And on the surface, it seems pretty simple because you can do what you want, but you live by the consequences of your choices. Um, uh, because of this, th there's a principle of sowing and reaping. And, uh, but when you start to dig in, um, it gets quite complicated and messy. On the surface, it seems quite simple. Yeah, do what you want, but you'll either pay for it or enjoy the reward of it. That seems very elementary and simple. But think about this. Um, what about if you grew up in a family, for example, if getting drunk was normal? In other words, everyone consumed alcohol and getting drunk was just part of how things were done. All right? Yes, you're free to choose and not to drink alcohol and not to get drunk. But the reality is because of the culture that you have grown up in, it's going to be way harder for you to choose not to say yes to alcohol and drunkenness. What about this one? If you grow up in a family where people just don't forgive, in other words, somebody hurts you and you hold on to that grudge and you never let it go. If that's how you're normal, uh, you have the freedom, but I think it's way harder than somebody else who's not in that culture uh, to choose, to forgive. And what about a culture of worrying? Uh, one of your parents or both of your parents just really are, are anxious. And often, if you look at families, those things are passed on. And so, yes, you are free. Um, um, but there, there is a consequence and it seems like the consequence goes beyond this generation or your generation. It seems that it can uh, impact generations. And so our, our decisions, uh, what you choose is really important. And so I want to have a look at these two principles. Let's have a look at the principle of sowing and reaping first. The Bible, um, let's look at Galatians because Paul opens it up in Galatians a little bit. So Galatians 6, verse 7 to 10. I'm going to read it. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. The one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap, if you do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, especially those who are in the household of faith. So Paul says, there's, in life, there's two buckets of seed. There's the bucket of the spirit and the bucket of the flesh. He says, you are the sowing from this bucket or that bucket. There's only two um, there's only two buckets and 
um, he's he's saying that this principle of sowing, he says there, uh, he says, don't grow weary, keep doing it. He says, um, if you do not give up, he says, um, for in due season you will reap. You see, sowing a seed and harvesting, sometimes there's a massive gap. And so we need to be patient and we need to have confidence that we will reap a harvest. You see, we look around and we see people doing bad stuff and nothing happens. And we think, oh, let's just get away with it. We're, you know, there's no sowing and reaping. No, it says God will not be mocked. Um, this plays itself out um, in, in relationships. If you sow from the bucket of the flesh, if you're selfish, if you're critical, if, you, if your attitude is bad in relationships, eventually it will be harvest time. And then people will get up and walk out of the relationship and that's, that's going to be it. You might seem like you, this is how dysfunctional or abusive uh, relationships develop. It just goes on and on and on and on. Eventually something snaps. And that's because harvest time comes in. Uh, what about um, uh, um, if you... If in your relationships you you are you're closed hearted um, and you internalize anything, everything. In other words, you don't open yourself up to a person, to, to your friends, to your spouse, uh, to your parents. If you just keep it in, you keep it in, keep it in, and, and you're closed hearted, eventually nobody's gonna come and be interested in what's going on inside of you. That's when it's harvest time. And so he says there's two buckets, and he says. The, the fruit of the Spirit, so the, the seed that you sow from the bucket of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and such things. So when we sow from the Spirit, he says there's two ways to live and there's sowing out of the bucket. But at the, at the end of the, at harvest time, there's going to be love, joy, peace, patience, all those um, fruit of the Spirit. And then the other bucket, he says, when you sow out of the bucket of the flesh, which is the selfish life, the me, mine, myself life, uh, it's the fruit of that is going to be idolatry, sorcery, uh, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. And so what Paul says here with the sowing and reaping thing, he says, don't think you're going to fool God. Whatever you sow, you will reap. Don't think that um, you can just live a selfish life and get away with it. What you, what you sow, you will reap. And, um, and, and so this is the one side of this um, dilemma that I was thinking about. And let's move on to free will. Free will. So free will is the ability for every person to act on the basis of their own rational choice without compulsion, without constraint. So to have, to be able to choose any option without being constrained or compelled by anything or anyone, that's free will, having the ability to choose and so i want to take us to ephesians chapter one paul talks about the will of god um, how god decides um, unpacks this idea of um, the will of god and and seeing as we made in the image of god i think there's some things that we can learn from how does god decide how does how's god move to act how does god make choices and let's have a look um, I'll read the verses. So it's verse 1, verse 4 and 5, um, verse, uh, and verse 11. So let me read. Verse 1 says, Paul, an apostle of Christ, by the will of God. Verse 4, even as he chose us before the foundation of the world, that we might be holy and blameless, he predestined us for adoption 
to himself as sons through Christ according to the purpose of his will. Uh, verse 9, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose which he set forth in Christ. And then verse 11, in him we have obtained inheritance having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works out all things in according to the counsel of his will. And so in this passage, we see three ideas or three words that talk to how God decides, how the, his will is accomplished and set out and uh, um, the how, how God makes decisions. So the first one is boule, which is counsel. All right. So the word in verse 11, it says, In him we have obtained inheritance. We are predestined according to the purpose of him, which works out all things according to the counsel of his will. All right. So when I think of that, I think of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit sitting down and having a council meeting. And, 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 and throwing things around. We've got this problem. Adam went off on a tangent. He's off track. We had this will and this purpose and this plan. But he's gone on this trajectory. How are we going to get him back? And uh, I, 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 I um, uh, imagine God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit having this counsel. And so part of God's way of making decisions is to hold a counsel. If you like, give me that little bit of license. So he holds a counsel with himself and with others. And so he begins to think through, okay, so if we do this, then it will have this implication and then this will happen. Um, and the likelihood of that happening. And so all the choices are laid out and then a decision is made. And this is the most, the most beneficial a path to take the council all right so that's the first idea we see in ephesians chapter one god has a council and the second is the word telema um uh, greek word telema which is this idea of the heart of god the desire of god so it's the will of god and um we see that um god not only holds a council thinks it through strategizes but god has something Behind that, driving him, he has a will, a purpose, um, the, the, the pleasure of his heart. Uh, the, the word of God call, um, describes it. Um, and so, um, the purpose of his, according to his purpose, according to his will, according to the delight of his heart. And so, there's, so this speaks to us of the heart that feels. As opposed to the counsel, the mind that thinks. And so, so God operates in both of these. He's driven by his love, um, his love for us to act. Um, and he thinks and strategizes through. So both coming together. And then it says, the third word is a plan. It says, according to the, the plan, the counsel of his will. The, this, this idea of a plan, a blueprint. And so because God feels and loves... He thinks through, strategizes, and then comes up with a plan, a blueprint of how things will be. And that's how, a little bit of how God operates. So let's just, let's just play that out in the, the story of God and man. So, so God's moved in his heart because he sees Adam off on a tangent. And because the desire, the, the pleasure of his heart... Um, God's purpose and will is to have many sons and daughters like his own beloved Jesus. And, and so because that's his heart, he wants to have many sons and daughters like Jesus. He, he, he uh, counsels, uh, he, takes a, he holds a counsel, he, he devises a strategy to accomplish that because Adam's gone off on a tangent and they come up with, the gospel, the good news. He makes a plan. His intention, um, his blueprint is that his beloved son would come as a man and make a way to reconcile God and man. And then there could be this walking together in the garden, this um, um, uh, uh, community of heaven, God communing with, with his sons and daughters, Adam, Eve, you and I. And so God makes a plan. 
Um, and God is always full of the attitude of heart, of, of faith, hope, and love. And so as we move, as we move into 2021, and as we make decisions, be mindful of the fact that there's two ways to live. There's two sources of seed that will have different outcomes. Jesus says, I have come that you may have life abundant. And if you live by the Spirit, you're going to produce the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, self-control, patience. You're going to produce those things. There's this way to live, but there's another way to live. The enemy has come to kill, steal, and destroy. There's the selfish life, and there's the selfless life. And when we live according to whatever we sow. And so as we move into 2021, and as we make decisions, I want you to be mindful of the fact that as we make good little decisions with a trajectory, because God has captured our heart, um, we, we are going to be transformed. And when we are transformed, you're going to transform people around you without even trying. And you're going to transform our, our, our city the south goes and we to transform our nation, but it starts with you. Are you going to choose to be transformed? Are you going to be true? Uh, choose to become a son and a daughter of God who walk by the Spirit and so out of this bucket um, only. And so I want to give you these four little pointers. Number one, <clears throat> know the desire of your heart. Know your heart's desire. I think it starts with self-awareness. I think it starts with asking yourself, so what do I really want? Those are the massive questions of life. What is it that is really important to me? You know, because we've got to be aware that actually even our heart's desires are flawed and broken. You see, um, people often use um, uh, the verse uh, in Psalm, I think Psalm twenty. Three, it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires. of People love that second part of that verse. And God will give us the desires of our heart. That is such, that is, that God will give you the desires of your heart is conditional to delighting yourself in the Lord. And so we, we, we have this idea that whatever you desire, God will give you the desire. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, delight. When God is your delight, you will get the heart's desire, God. It's not whatever I want, God will give it to me because it's my desire. That's not interpreting and living according to the word. Anyway, um, know your heart's desire. Um, to do that, you've got to be honest with yourself. What is it you really want? Because some of us might answer that thing. I just want to be happy. I just want peace. I, I, I just want security. Let's just take that one. I just want secure. I, I just want to be safe. I just want to, I just want my future to be secure. Now, is that a desire from God or not? I know it's a natural desire of all of us to be safe and secure, but actually it's based in fear. Because if you believe God, God's got you. And so that's why I think it's so important because when we align ourselves with the purpose and plan and, and what God has for us, we're going to live the absolute. When we live out of faith and we sow out of this bucket of the Spirit, we're going to live a completely different life. So number one, know your heart's desire. Interrogate what is it you're really after. And, and then, then when you understand what you want, ask why do you want it? Because a lot of, our, uh, of what we want is out of our broken. I just want to look good. I just want to, be, I just want to have enough money. It's like why? That's an identity issue. It's actually out of my brokenness. I want everyone to see that I'm okay. And so know your heart's desire. Number two, take counsel. When you make decisions going into 2021, don't just decide without, number one, taking counsel with yourself. 
In other words, hold a little council meeting. In other words, think it through. In other words, be strategic. Okay, so if I do this, this and this, or I could do this, I could do that, lay out your options. Then think through what that would look like in the next 10 years. This is what God did. He, he looked from creation all the way to today, extrapolating the possible things or outcomes of his decisions. And so be like God, because you created in his image. Be intentional and strategic. So have a counsel with yourself. Number two, have a counsel with others. I, I see the Godhead, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit counseling and bringing different perspectives. I love that dynamic when it comes to decisions. Tell me what you think. Not, and this is what I'm doing, what I think. It's like, the decision's made. Why should I give you my opinion? It's like, have a counsel with others. When you live open, when you open your heart to others and, 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 and open yourself to people's counsel, the Bible talks in Proverbs, there's victory with many counselors. It's a choice that you make. So know your heart's desire. Take counsel. Number three, have a plan. Once you know what you want, your heart's desire, once you've thought it through, heart and thinking, head and heart, once you've thought it through, devise a plan. Put a strategy down. Make a plan. This is how we're going to do. This is, this is the plan. Now, because we just came from 2020, we a little bit think like, oh, let's not plan because 2020's plan got canned. And we just, how do you make up a new plan? Just think of it like God. God gave us free will. So God has a plan. He sets you on the path. Off you go. You get to the fork in the road and you take the wrong fork. God doesn't throw his hands up like we do. Some of us did in 2020. It's like, ah, pff, um, what's the use? No, God, God, God follows you. God knows that you're going to go down that way. You should go down that way. But when you get there, there's three options. And God follows you, trusting that when you get there, you're going to make the right. You might take a circuitous route, but God's with you all the way. Because His purpose and His plan will prevail. And we've got to have confidence. And also the gravity to understand that even when things don't work out according to our plan, it's okay. It's okay. We adjust. We move on. So make a plan. And then number four, finally manage your attitude manage your attitude you see um attitude are like glasses have you ever put um, um like yellow sunglasses on suddenly everything's colored by yellow that's what an attitude is um when you're looking at your heart's desire it's colored by your attitude when you're looking and strategizing and thinking through um, uh, it's colored by the, your attitude. I love the three little things at the end um, of, of Corinthians 13. It says, now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. Those are great attitudes to have. Our attitude of faith, attitude of hope, attitude of love. And when we are, are living out of the bucket of faith, when you're living out of the bucket of the spirit, then we'll produce that kind of attitude. And we have full control of the attitude, how we, how we do life, the attitude by which we attack uh, decisions, uh, face things. And, and, and so those three, those four things, know your heart's desire, take counsel with yourself and others, uh, make a plan and manage your attitude. I want to leave you with that as we launch into 2021, as you start making decisions for the new year, as you start uh, dreaming for the next five and 10 years coming, what life is going to look like? What is it that you're going after? What is it? What is, what is um, God called you to? What, what, how are you going to impact people? How are you going to disciple people in the nations? And as you begin to make decisions, Hold these four things in tension. 
Um, let's be honest with ourselves. Let's be honest with others. Let's be uh, intentional about our, our plan that we have. And let's make, uh, make sure that we're managing our attitude. Because when we do that, we will produce incredible fruit that will totally transform us. I want to be totally different in the next 12 months. I want to be a completely different person because I've walked with God. I've consistently sown out of the bucket of the Spirit and I've lived the Spirit life walking led by God and I've sown from the Spirit, not sown from the flesh, sown from the... I want to be completely different because I know if I'm different, I'm going to influence others around me. And so I want to leave you with that and I want to say right now, Make a choice. You choose how it's going, what it's going to look like right now. Make some choice. You take the initiative. Don't let waves and wind just buffet you left and right. And oh, I'll just go. With. Be intentional right now. Make some choices. Do business with God and say, right now, God, I want to live from the live from the Spirit. I want to I want to produce. The fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control. I want to be a, a true son and daughter, just like Jesus. Conform me, change me to the image of Jesus. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you his peace. Have an awesome rest of your Sunday.